Most of the time, when you go to the movies, you can expect the story you see on the big screen to be resolved by the time the lights come up. Maybe not all the good guys will make it to the end, but for the most part, the world will be as it should be. But not every story can have a happy ending. Sometimes the price of victory is high, and characters we learn to love are taken away from us. Other times, the heroes don't win at all, no matter how much they sacrificed. Man on Fire may not have been a favorite of critics, but Denzel Washington's performance as alcoholic bodyguard John Creasy was one of the most moving of his career. After years of booze and bullets, Creasy gets a shot at redemption as a bodyguard for Peter, played by Dakota Fanning. When a powerful crime syndicate captures Peter, Creasy buys pretty much every gun in Mexico and goes on a murder spree, eventually capturing the kidnapper's brother. Dying from a gunshot wound, Creasy trades himself for the safety of his charge. But before handing himself over, he reunites with Peter for just a few seconds. When he tells her goodbye, it's a moment that will make even the toughest action fan weep. Where are you going? I'm going home too. While the boxing drama Million Dollar Baby may at times feel as inspirational as Rocky, Rocky Balboa never ended a movie quite like this. Hilary Swank plays Maggie Fitzgerald, a backwoods waitress hoping to make a name as a boxer, and director Clint Eastwood plays grizzled trainer Frankie Dunn. Dunn is reluctant to teach a woman at first, especially one as old as Maggie, but eventually her persistence wins him over. Maggie proves her worth KOing her way to a championship fight, and that's when the movie takes a hard left turn. Maggie is paralyzed from the neck down when her opponent illegally punches her after the bell. A hero falls hard from the punch, smashing her neck against a footstool. Maggie loses her leg and she begs her trainer to end her suffering. Dunn refuses at first, but agrees after Maggie tries and fails to commit suicide. Before Dunn administers the lethal injection, he tells Maggie the meaning of her Irish nickname. Makushla means my darling, my blood. Even steely-eyed Eastwood can't keep the tears back here. And you know, if even Dirty Harry is getting weepy, there's no way you're going to be able to hold it back. Niagara Falls, Frankie Angel. After the tragic death of bear enthusiast Timothy Treadwell at the jaws of a brown bear, director Werner Herzog assembled Treadwell's footage and created Grizzly Man, one of the most moving documentaries of all time. Grizzly Man follows Treadwell as he journeys into the Alaskan wilderness, interacts with animals, and shares his unique view about a man's place in nature. While Treadwell's behavior is sometimes questionable, it's hard not to admire his passion. With the help of Herzog's guiding hand, we grow attached to Treadwell as Grizzly Man heads for its inevitable tragic ending. While we go into Grizzly Man knowing Treadwell's fate, it's upsetting to finally say goodbye to such a unique soul. In the film's last moments, we watch for the last time as Treadwell wanders into the woods, accompanied by two fuzzy friends and a mournful country song that feels like it was written just for him. While Wes Anderson directs comedies, there's always a deep sense of melancholy underlying his work. That's especially true for the Grand Budapest Hotel. Set in the fictional European country of Zubrovka, the film's narrative is nestled inside multiple timelines, with the bulk of it set during the 1930s. Our hero, Zero Mustafa, played by both Tony Revolori and F. Murray Abraham, works as a lobby boy at the Grand Budapest Hotel under the guidance of flamboyant concierge M. Gustav, played by Rafe Fiennes. The plot involves a dead heiress, a missing painting, and a family of greedy goons, but the drama revolves around the dark shadow hanging over this dream world. In the 1930s, the hotel is an impossibly charming world of pastel colors. As the story continues, both Zubrovka and Grand Budapest are overrun by enemy forces, quasi-Nazis followed by quasi-Soviets. 
As the totalitarian horrors of the 20th century creep in, M. Gustav's civilized world starts to fade. Guests stop coming and eventually the building is torn down. M. Gustav is killed during the war. Communism washes over Zubrovka and Zero is left alone with nothing but his memories of better days. The film ends with the nostalgic author saying over the closing frame, it was an enchanting old ruin but I never managed to see it again. On its cold, grey surface, The Black Coat's Daughter is a movie about a girl who's demonically possessed, but under the slow building dread and eerie music, there's a tragic story about a helpless child afraid of being alone. Played at first by Kiernan Shipka and later by Emma Roberts, Kat is a boarding school student with some serious abandonment issues. When her parents are late to pick her up for the semester break, Kat freaks out. It doesn't help matters any when she has an unsettling dream about her parents' untimely fate. Terrified her parents are dead and that she'll be all alone in the world, Kat literally makes a deal with the devil, allowing herself to be possessed in exchange for companionship. She's so afraid of losing the spirit's company, she be heads three people at its urging. When a priest exercises the demon from Cat, she's so scared of being alone that she begs the beast to stay. Unfortunately, her pleas are no match for holy water. Years later, an older cat murders two new victims and brings the heads back to the school hoping her sacrifice will summon the demon. When she realizes the evil spirit has left the school behind, the movie ends with Kat sobbing and screaming into the wintry void. She realizes now that she's truly by herself. Nobody will ever come to pick her up, and even the devil doesn't want her. Directed by Damien Chazelle, La La Land follows two star-crossed lovers, Emma Stone as aspiring actress Mia and jazz devotee Sebastian played by Ryan Gosling. Mia and Sebastian enjoy the happiness and heartache all long-term relationships face. Eventually, because of their conflicting ambitions, they go their separate ways. Five years later, Mia is a movie star and Sebastian runs a thriving nightclub. One night, they lock eyes across a room and we're treated to an elaborate dream sequence. It's the kind of ending we expect to see. The guy and girl end up with one another and live happily ever after. But the dream soon comes to an end with Mia and Sebastian once again going their own ways. It's a heartbreaking reminder that the choices we make always leave the door open for regret. Before Tony Stark made his Iron Man suit and before Christian Bale donned the bat cow, there was Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Jackman played Logan to perfection, to the point where it almost seems impossible that any actor could ever replace him in the role. He defined Wolverine for well over a decade, appearing in every X-Men movie up until his blood-soaked swan song, 2017's Logan. Set in the near-distant future, Logan follows a dying Wolverine as he uses the last of his strength to protect the young Laura, who Logan eventually learns is actually his clone. A shady scientist wants Laura for nefarious purposes, and he has the vicious cybernetic Reavers under his command. At first, Logan is such a broken man that he wants nothing to do with Laura, and only the aging Professor X convinces him to do the right thing. Unfortunately, Professor X doesn't survive the journey, but Logan continues to help Laura all the same. When Laura and other mutant children try to escape into Canada, Wolverine makes his final stand in the woods to protect their escape. But even after fighting all the Reavers, Logan still must face a clone made to be a stronger, younger version of himself. With the help of Laura and her allies, the clone is killed, but Logan's wounds are too much for him. Thankfully, after a brutal life full of hard decisions, Logan enjoys a moment of fatherly love before shuffling off this mortal coil. In the film's final scene, a tearful Laura gives Logan the eulogy he deserves, quoting Alan Ludd's final monologue from the classic Western Shane. There's no living with the killing. There's no going back. Right or wrong, it's a brand. A brand that sticks. After ending her speech, Laura tips the cross on his grave over on his side, marking the Wolverine's final resting place with an X. While the past few years have given us plenty of amazing superhero movies, Logan was the first superhero movie to truly make audiences weep for such an iconic character. Since Thanos' first MCU appearance in 2012, Marvel fans couldn't wait for the big purple baddie to throw down with the Avengers. 
the MCU filmmakers only gave us brief, teasing glimpses of the Mad Titan, first a little bit in the initial Avengers movie, then a lot more in Guardians of the Galaxy, and later in Avengers Age of Ultron. Finally, six years after Avengers, Thanos finally arrived with his Infinity Gauntlet, and Earth's mightiest heroes were completely overmatched. It looked like Thor was going to save the day when he slammed Stormbreaker into the Mad Titan's chest, but as the God of Thunder quickly learned, You should have gone for the head. And just like that, with a snap of his fingers, Thanos wiped out half the population of the universe, including the majority of our beloved heroes, along with most of the Avengers turning to dust. Almost all the Guardians fell victim to Thanos' purge. Rocket was there to watch teenage Groot fade away and to hear his final, I am Groot. Adding to the sorrow of many fans, Guardians of the Galaxy's writer and director James Gunn would eventually reveal that Groot's last, I am Groot, translated into the word dad. For many fans, Peter Parker's death was the most painful to watch. Even though he just fought the toughest villain in the MCU, Peter's still just a kid afraid of fading away. Considering, we know, many of the characters that died at the end of Infinity War have more solo films in their respective franchises planned, it seems pretty likely Avengers 4 will undo a lot of Thanos' damage. Still, you know things are bad when Captain America, the team's most optimistic member, is unable to do anything but whisper. Oh God. Infinity War may have the darkest ending of any major blockbuster ever. There's no moral victory, no feel-good speech. For the first time, the Avengers have truly lost, and it all ends with Thanos admiring his handiwork, smiling as the sun rises on a grateful universe.